If you've been feeling overwhelmed with anxiety lately, try listening to a guided meditation on the Meditation for Anxiety podcast. Meditation is a proven natural way to help you calm down and dissolve stress so you can feel lighter and happier. So subscribe for free today to the Meditation for Anxiety podcast by searching for Meditation for Anxiety on your favorite podcast player. This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2510, Frugal Minimalism, Do Less, Buy Less, Worry Less, Live More, Part 1, by Liz of frugalwoods.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is the show where I read to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet. And today, I have a bit of a longer post, so I'm splitting it up into two, reading the first part today and the second half tomorrow. So with that, let's dive right into part one and start optimizing your life. Frugal Minimalism, Do Less, Buy Less, Worry Less, Live More, part one by Liz of frugalwoods.com. I'm currently engaged in what could only be described as a battle with our basement. When we moved to our homestead last May, we established a mentality and practice of minimalism in our home. Mr. Frugalwoods and I eliminated just about every object that we don't actively use on a daily basis. As we unpacked, we only removed things from boxes that we find ourselves in need of regularly. And I wish, fervently in fact, that I could take my own advice and establish a practice of minimalism throughout my entire house, including the basement. But that hasn't yet come to fruition. Having only what we need. What didn't we unpack? Here's an example. Throw pillows. Back in Cambridge, I had this elaborate array of throw pillows on our bed that I had to take off every night and reapply every morning after waking. What a waste of time. Mr. Frugalwoods and I made the unanimous decision when we moved that we'd no longer be slaves to such worthless time sucks. No one even saw these pillows except for Mr. Frugalwoods and me. And now we both thought of them as a chore. How dumb is that? We first wasted money buying those pillows. We then had to purchase a bin to store them in while we slept. We had to clean them periodically. And ultimately, they came to represent a dreaded daily chore. All because I thought we should have throw pillows. Because on Instagram, people's beds have throw pillows. And on HGTV, everyone waxes about their lovely throw pillows but I didn't want throw pillows. Mr. Frugalwood certainly didn't want throw pillows. They evolved into nothing more than a pointless waste of time, money, and energy. And so, our bed is now happily sans throw pillows. There's nothing inherently wrong with throw pillows. In fact, you might love your throw pillows. For me, however, I came to realize that I only had throw pillows because I thought I should have them, not because they brought me lasting joy. I'd become a servant to my material possessions, and I was owned by my stuff. As we unpacked our moving boxes last year, I realized we have tons of possessions that represent this loss of time, energy, and money that we'd previously surrounded ourselves with. Decorative vases and candles that must be dusted and cleaned, tablecloths that must be washed and ironed, the list of futile home decor items goes on. In an effort and desire to simplify our lives and give ourselves back hours of time each week, we decided not to unpack these things. We streamlined. I still have vases of flowers and candles strewn about, but in a greatly reduced iteration. I love our minimalized home. It's comfortable. It's beautiful, in my opinion. And most crucially, it's functional. It serves our needs. We're no longer servants to our stuff. We no longer feel hemmed in by clutter and we have everything we need easily accessible. It's also true that our home is largely toddlerized. In light of the fact that we have a curious, inventive, creative, exploratory 20-month-old in our household, things like precarious end tables with glass bird figurines balanced on top are nothing more than a death wish. I'm a firm practitioner of leaning into the phase of life you find yourself in. 
Since our phase of life is currently parenting a toddler, we've structured our home environment to match. We don't have to follow baby woods around from room to room in a panic that she might pull some artifact or a piece of furniture down on top of herself. Rather, we're relaxed in the knowledge that our furniture is secured to the wall. Breakables are beyond her tiny grasp, and she has plenty of books and toys to examine down at her level. There's no joy or pleasure in militating against your present condition. Wherever you find yourself on your life journey, sinking deeply and gratefully into that phase will yield the greatest level of contentment and ease. If only I followed my own advice. That's the good part. You may now be thinking that I, like some frugal sage, then gave away all of this unneeded extra stuff, right? I just took it all to goodwill and never thought about it again, right? Wrong. So very wrong. Beholden to an unrepentant pack rat gene that courses through my blood, I ferreted it all away in our basement, following in the footsteps of my grandfather and my parents before me, who both had basements of towering mountainous junk. Mr. Frugalwoods and I piled box after box of stuff that we decided we didn't need on a regular basis down in the depths of our basement. Why, oh why, didn't I just get rid of it all? After a year of allowing these partially unpacked boxes to languish in our concrete basement, I'm organizing them. I'm tackling the colossal, perilous piles of rifled through moving boxes that made walking through our basement reminiscent of an obstacle course. There were so many boxes down there, many of which contained roughly one or two items, that stepping off the staircase was becoming a problematic proposition of where to place one's foot. That's just embarrassing. But now I'm sorting through the contents of each box and at long last, setting aside things to give away. Why is it so hard for us to let go of material possessions? I know that for me, a large component is my desire not to buy things again. It's something of a sunk cost fallacy. I'll never be a true minimalist for exceedingly practical reasons. We might need it someday. I have sets of sheets we received as wedding presents nine years ago that I've never taken out of their packages. I keep them because I know that one day our current set of sheets will wear out and we'll need another. To me, this is practical frugality. But what about all the candles and vases? Why can't I just let them go? When we own things, we tend to imbue them with a greater sense of importance because we feel invested in their ownership. Letting them go, however, is a form of liberation and means of cutting our shackles to ultimately meaningless material possessions. However, I counter this with my pragmatic frugality. It makes no economic sense to get rid of bed sheets that we'll use in a few years' time. Stop doing. What I've discovered during this past year of living with less stuff is that I've embraced an ethos of own less, do less, buy less, and as a result, live more. Just as I've stopped wasting my time tending to clutter in my home, I've also stopped doing quite a few activities I used to do that ultimately brought me stress. There's an exhaustive list of things we're all apparently supposed to do every day, but that we may or may not enjoy or even require for our survival. There are some things we should do even if we don't particularly enjoy them, like brushing our teeth or exercising. But then there are things we can let go of that we can simply choose to stop doing. I stop shopping. Clothes and home decor were my two worst offenders in the shopping category. And I used to spend an unbelievable amount of time, energy, and money in pursuit of these things. I'd cruise through thrift stores in search of yet another dress or yet another funky vase for the kitchen table. I had no need for this stuff and I didn't particularly enjoy shopping but it was an activity I'd always done and always assumed I would do. Three years ago, I stopped. I didn't do anything fancy or wild. I simply stopped shopping and I became happier. I was less stressed because I wasn't always on the hunt for something. I became less anxious because I wasn't constantly surrounded by things I didn't own and that I thought were better than what I did own. I spent less money, my initial goal, and I became more content with the things I do own. I never realized the stress and anxiety that regular shopping caused me until I let it go. 
to be continued. You just listened to part one of the post titled Frugal Minimalism, Do Less, Buy Less, Worry Less, Live More by Liz of frugalwoods.com. Hold music. You want to avoid it, and so do your customers. So say goodbye to hold music and hello to faster, smarter support with Salesforce. Make service more personal and agents more productive using built-in trusted AI. Then watch costs and wait times drop and satisfaction soar. Support customers in a whole new way with Service GPT. Learn how at salesforce.com slash service GPT. Apple Card is the credit card created by Apple. You earn 3% daily cash back up front when you use it to buy a new iPhone 15, AirPods, or any products at Apple. And you can automatically grow your daily cash at 4.15% annual percentage yield when you open a high-yield savings account. Apply for Apple Card in the Wallet app on iPhone. Apple Card subject to credit approval. Savings is available to Apple Card owners subject to eligibility. Savings accounts by Goldman Sachs Bank USA member FDIC. Terms apply. Possessions tend to accumulate quietly over time, especially when we have the luxury of space. It's almost human nature to hold on to things, even if we don't currently require them, simply out of that just-in-case mentality. Gradually, this accumulation becomes evident, piling up in our lives. But what if we introduced expiration dates for our belongings, similar to how we do with perishable food items? I've personally applied this concept to my wardrobe. Each year, I embark on a closet overhaul, carefully reorganizing my clothing collection. As I return items to their place, I make a deliberate gesture by turning the hangers around so the open side faces outward. When I wear a piece of clothing and return it, I reposition the hanger the correct way, indicating that that has served its purpose. After a year, the hangers still facing the wrong way serve as a visual reminder of all the garments I never actually wore, prompting me to donate them. Reducing our possessions has another valuable side effect, heightened awareness of what we do own. This mindfulness makes us less prone to acquiring duplicates. For instance, when you are in search of your yoga mat but can't locate it because it's buried under an abundance of items, you're more likely to buy a replacement. Having fewer belongings not only declutters our space, but also sharpens our focus on what truly matters. But this was just the first half of the article. So be sure to come on back tomorrow where we'll finish up this post and where your optimal life awaits.